Well, good afternoon, Steve. Thanks for chatting to us on Corn FC TV. Uh, it's been a while since uh, we had a chat. I think it was uh, the beginning of the season when we last uh, had a few words with you. But uh, how's it been over the last couple of weeks and yeah, well, it's uh, months? Good to see you again, mate. I probably had more air as well when I saw you last. Um, no, it's been an exciting time. Um, obviously, we, we worked hard last year to get into this, uh, this league. Um, and all of a sudden, you, you soon see what sort of a level it is from the very first game of the season. Um, but it's no secret we've also had a lot of stuff going on and off the field, um, which has made my life really uh, busy. Um, I'm surprised I've not been kicked out already from the wife, but it, it's one of them. It's also exciting. Um, our football clubs, since I took over, it's never been a boring time because uh, obviously last year was an exciting time with everything that was going on with the promotion push. And this year, with everything that's going on as well, a lot of people would have said we probably lost our way uh, with the news that came out. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Sean uh, as chairman and uh, our big sponsor in terms of Excelsior with, uh, with Sean and Lee as business partners. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, sometimes things change and people move on and uh, it's been made uh, clear by everybody at Cone Football Club that we really do appreciate what they did for the club over 10 years. I mean, 10 years of sponsorship in one club at this level, it's, it's yeah. unheard of. Um, but sometimes things change, um, and then all of a sudden, when they say one door closes and another one opens, they've put us in a position where we're an attractive football club for yeah. other people, and it's just brought the club closer together as well, because everybody's mucking in a little bit more now. Yeah. Um, it's funny when you hear the rumours that's going on outside of the football club, um, money's been pulled and players aren't getting paid, that was the latest one today. Um, people are jumping ship left, right and centre, um, but inside our, inside our club... It's business as usual, and yeah. our promotion is uh, sorry, our target is still very much a promotion uh, yeah. playoff spot. Um, so it's it's exciting because you then feel like it's us against the world, and that's how I like it, yeah. as you know. So there's certainly uh, definitely a, a, a unity here at Con uh, FC. Yeah, we've always had that, and I think that's what people are probably jealous about. You know, uh, we have got a real family club, and you've only got to look at our average fan uh, fan base that turn up for a home game. Although we've only had two in the first seven league games, which has killed us a little bit. Um, but yeah, we're, we're a club that <clears throat> it's not about one individual; it's about everyone pulling in the right direction. Um, and within sort of hours of the news coming out uh, about Sean stepping down, um, phone calls were coming in. People wanted to be involved at Cone Football Club. Um, and I think you did an interview earlier uh, with the new man. Um, I know him, and I'm excited that it's uh, that it's James that's actually got the opportunity to take the club forward. And you know, he's probably not. <coughs> uh, forgive me for his first game in charge because I ignored him Sunday after Saturday's <laughs> result. Uh, but no, it's, it's good times. Um, you know, James will come on board and, and lead the club where it needs to be. He's then got the backing of all the people in the committee. The fans are all there, so. Yeah, that unity is here, uh, yeah. but stronger and uh, better than before. I pledge you say XLCR pulled out, but that give opportunities for several local companies to get involved here at Con Football Club. Yeah, yeah, and you know, people say they've pulled out, and all of a sudden they, they were a big part of our football club because uh, the the friends of the club uh, they've been here a long time, but they weren't the be all and end all the Con Football Club. Mm. Um, I do want to make that clear as well. Yeah. Um, as much as we thank them, and they were fantastic for us. But as a football club, <clears throat> it takes more than one sponsor to run a football club, and yeah. they know that as well. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes that people don't see. Um, you look at the ground now, it, it's the best the ground has ever looked. Yeah. Um, there's hardly any space any, for any more boards. Um, well, I was just looking at that, Steve. I was yeah. looking at the fact that, you know, you rightly say, it's not just about XLCR. There are other sponsors here there who put a great sponsors. deal of time and yeah. effort into the yeah, club. Yeah, there is. And you know what? It's, it's one of them that... Because of where we've been with Excelsior, people have seen the exposure they've probably had as well, and that's also whet the appetite for two yeah. or three companies that yeah. we're talking maybe more than just a couple of boards, which again fills me with excitement because then I can start looking at that next calibre of player. Mm. Um, <clears throat> Webby's uh, already put the stops on that, but I'll soon talk him round that there's some striker <laughs> that I want out there. Um, yeah. But no, as I said, at the moment it's going really well. Um, it's then we've just got to start concentrating on the football side of things mm. now because. The off-fielders obviously took the focus away a little bit, um, but now it's time to concentrate. Yeah. And Webby's turned around and said, look, let's start our season on Saturday. Uh, but for me, it starts tomorrow because I, I've got a football match tomorrow and I want to win. Mm. So it's going to be a tough one against yeah. Farsley, uh, but it's very much let's focus on the football now mm. and, and see where we go. But with the introduction of the Evo stick this season, has it been a bit of a baptism of fire for uh, several <coughs> players? Oh, yeah, some of the players, I think they've really been 
um, sort of flowing into it and they probably didn't realise the level. Uh, they certainly stood up to that um, because I think you look at the results, we've played seven, won three, lost four. Um, and in every single game, we probably um, dominated large parts of them games yeah. and we certainly haven't been outclassed. We've never come off in any of the defeats and gone, bloody hell, we, we've been turned over here and, oh God, we're finding our feet. Um, you look around the websites and forums of other teams, especially locally at our level, and the fans aren't happy. You know, the, mm. it could have been five, six, seven, eight. We've not had that. We've come off, and mm. every team that's beat us, we've given them a good game. The teams that we've beat, they've been tough games as well, and we've earned the win. Um, but the league's so tight. You yeah. know, I think we're we've got two games on on the majority of the teams. We win that, we go fifth. Yeah. If we're losing another one, we're in bottom three. It's it's <laughs> it's so tight. Yeah. It's an exciting league to be in because everybody's beating each other, um, and when you look at the results, because everybody is beating each other, it doesn't matter if you lose because you know if you go and win the next two, you're mm. back in the playoff contention. And, yeah. and I think it'll be like that for the best part of the season. And as long as we can stick in there, um, we're we're under pressure with the squad a little bit in terms of injuries. That I mean that's killed me since pre-season. I'm not looking for any excuses because the lads have done really well. But it has killed us. The last game of pre-season, I've lost three of my key players, um, and they were ones that make us tick, and, and you know they're a big part of what we achieved last year. Um, so once they come back, will we kick on? Hopefully, uh, but we can't really afford to wait for that because some of them are long term. And then after Saturday's game, I think I've lost another three. Um, so I'm very busy at the moment and instead of being at work I'm signing players and instead of being a husband I'm signing players and instead of being a dad to my kids I'm being a football manager and signing sign players and, but that's the nature of the beast at this level of football yeah. it's, it, you've got to commit to that and be all in or nothing and um, there's going to be some new faces coming in um, we've got some experienced players that I think we do need to bring in because uh, we are a young side um, and hopefully it'll just lift the dressing room a little bit give the fans a little bit of excitement as well uh, and again I think it shows the, the kind of football we've come uh, where we've come from in a short space of time you know we're playing teams like um, Heidi with Conference not yeah. so long ago we at the Coleman FC we played Scarborough on Saturday ex-league club yeah. and we more than matched Scarborough on Saturday uh, yeah. to get done in an 87 minute penalty it was an absolute sickness uh, but it also shows how far we've come and we're not a million miles away so no. I must admit the games I've seen this season, Steve, it just seemed to be that that little bit of lack of concentration in, in uh, important stages of a game that's just cost you. That's this league and the league above and the league above that. Um, in the counties you can probably make a few errors, um, not get penalised because of the quality um, and get away with you know scruffy wins or a draw. You can't, in this league it's amazing, our goals, we don't seem to have good goals scored against us. It's goals that we, and I don't want to say that away for people who've scored, but we make it so easy for teams sometimes, just bad decision making or um, defensive concentration, you know, poor judgment, and then we don't take our chances but then get penalised. And I don't think anyone's given us a goal yet where we've gone, oh, yeah, well, that was all right, thanks for that. Yeah. We have to work for them. But that's this league, and, you know, this, the lads have to get to grips with that. We're seven games in. We've got a big period coming up now, and you get to Christmas, and all of a sudden you're playing the same amount of games as Premier League clubs, mm. and it's relentless. Um, and if you don't um, iron out them little errors um, early doors, you soon find yourself in a position where it's a bloody tough long yeah. season. But we're not panicking on that stage because I think we know where we're going wrong. If we can just cut them out, I think we'll be all right. Yeah. So you, you were talking about the possibility of bringing some uh, new players in. Uh, is that? Definitely on the cards then, Steve. Yeah, um, obviously I, I'm going to give the old uh, Premier League manager uh, spiel. We don't talk about other players, but it's non-league football and it happens and we do need players and we are speaking to players, players who are unattached. Uh, we're speaking to people. I've also text managers today to tell them that we've put seven days on, on players as well, uh, out of courtesy. But we know we need to bring some players in uh, and mm. quick as well. Um, there are going to be... Some players that people know. There's going to be a couple of players people don't know really too much about, which is great for us because then again it's that unknown entity. Um, but the player that I'll be bringing in is better than what we've got, and then that's when you know you, you're attracting the right player in. Uh, you, again, you're putting pressure on yourself because of some of the names that we're talking about. If they come off, brilliant. If they don't, we'll back to the drawing board and we'll go and find somebody else. Um, but there will be people coming through the door in the next week, still two weeks, that will really give the, the club a lift. Excellent. Well, before you leave, just uh, talking about tomorrow night's game with uh, Farsley. Yeah. What do you know about Farsley, apart from the fact that they are a very good side? <laughs> 
Uh, it's certainly not a team I'd want to be going to on a, a Tuesday night away, um, bare bones after a, a bad defeat on Saturday in the last minute when you're feeling a little bit down. But then I'm also a glass half full kind of guy. Um, it's probably a, a great opportunity for us to go. Uh, everybody's written us off already and even the chairman said look let's start Saturday and I'm like no let's start tomorrow yeah. let's go to Farsley we are down to the bare bones but let's roll our sleeves up and show what kind of a team we are that sometimes we can't play the pretty little football that we might be known for let's go and roll our sleeves up and get a well earned uh, victory or a draw if we come away with something from Farsley because they are by all accounts the best team in the league yeah. um, so there's no better team to go to um, they're a strong, experienced team. They start the season really, really well. Um, I've got spies on the ground who have told me that the electric up front, very creative midfield, strong in defence, and a great goalkeeper. So, you know, <laughs> game plan. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do, but no, we're looking forward to it. And uh, hopefully, the fans will come out in the numbers like they did Saturday. I've got to say, the fans on Saturday at Scarborough, we took a coach, and there was also people, parents who their lads are injured. And they still drove all the way to Scarborough and even stayed over. Kids, I think we had over 25 kids there on Saturday at Scarborough. And I want to thank the fans because I think they did go through a bit of a, you know, toy time mm. with uh, with Scarborough fans. And, and I was really shown what a, a football club supporter is about at this level. Mm. So I want to thank them for that. Um, and then we go tomorrow and we'll try and get a result and then yeah. we kick on. Well, Steve, thanks for chatting to us on Cohen FC TV. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot.